Hey, I'm Zealous H Plays. Welcome back to San Bernardino Zoo. I had a load of comments on the last episode that you didn't see enough of the crane habitat or the water terrace cinematic, so I thought I'd put a few more in here for you. Today we're going to be working on the entrance. I can't wait to get stuck into that. And in order to see what we're going to be doing, we're going to need to move our drone. There we go. So now we can see the area we're going to be working on today. I've got three different things that I want to build today. And one of them is going to require me to use reward statues, which means I need to do something I haven't done since the day I bought Planet Zoo and play career mode. Don't worry, I won't make you watch me do it, but I'm going to smash through a load of these to get as many of the animal reward statues as I can. And we're going to be using all of them. That'll do. Let's get on to the area we're going to be working in, which is here. And firstly, we're going to set up a road that goes past the zoo. So one of the most important things I think about making your zoo look good is to make sure you set the scene and don't just have the zoo sort of sat in the middle of a blank map. So before we start building anything fancy, I'm going to sort out a road that's going to run past the entrance to the zoo. And this is going to take coaches in and out of the transport hub uh, that we built or sort of started building back in episode one. So this is going to be the easiest way to enter the zoo. I figure there'd be coaches running to the zoo with some nice branding uh, that I've put on them um, to try and dissuade people from using cars. Although obviously this being America, that's going to be pretty tough. Um, and then I wanted a little water feature in between the roads. This is one from Tacton Zoo, which I also used in the wetlands. I toyed with the idea of using it here, but in the end, I didn't want to use the exact same thing again. So I'm gonna use this as a base to um, build a new fountain that's gonna go here. Something looks a bit different and a bit less modernist. Um, I use the elephant enrichment pool for the base of this fountain, just because it's got that really nice blue color and you don't have to muck about with Planet Zoo's water, <laughs> which is always an advantage. And we're gonna put some gravel around it as well using the gravel path. We're gonna be doing this a lot today. I really like the gravel path texture. Um, a bit tricky to work with, obviously, with it being a path. And then we're gonna do some planting. I'm gonna be using a lot of grasses, succulents, and cactuses in this zoo, seeing as we're in Southern California. I wanna give a big thank you to a couple of you guys, Sua Raccoon and Corey Reynolds, who left some really interesting comments about the droughts in Southern California and how zoos and other sort of institutions try and work with that. Um, and they pointed out that the water terraces was a little lush uh, for this environment. Uh, to be honest, that was the idea. I wanted that place to be lush. Zeus can certainly afford to do things like that if they want. But for the majority of the park, we're going to go with some much more Californian um, or Southern Californian style planting. And they gave me some really good advice on that. Um, so I'll be following that for the rest of the series. So thank you so much for doing that. Um, we're going to get some plants in here and some mulch so it looks like we've got flower beds around the gravel and just get this looking really nice without going too over the top and we'll come back and finish this later on in the episode but i want to get stuck into the next part of the build which is where the reward statues come in now i've mentioned the singapore zoo uh, back in episode one and one of the things that i saw in my research was something that i really liked which was a stone facade over a tunnel uh, somewhere along the road that takes you into the zoo I think it's quite a way away from the zoo, um, but I want to use that to go over the entrance to the transport hub. So we're going to be using a load of fake rocks and then a lot of animal statues. It's like a, a relief, I think is what it's called. That's the sort of artistic term for it, where you carve animal shapes out of the rocks. So it's going to be pretty tricky to pull off because all these statues in Planet Zoo are three-dimensional and designed to be freestanding rather than um, flat. Um, so we're going to do a lot of burying statues, recoloring them. I'm going to be using some of the animal reward statues, some of the concrete statues from the aquatic pack, um, and some of the classic statues as well. And just trying to build um, a sort of effect that I like the look of. Um, that's going to go up the sides of each of the entrances into the transport hub and then all the way along the top so i'm just doing the rocks at the moment making sure the bottom is thicker than the top so it looks realistic um, and just getting a shape that i'm pretty happy with let's get on to the statues so here they are i've got a little palette together of statues that i think might be suitable and we're going to start placing them into the rocks moving them around and getting them to look the way that i want i'm going to start with this big saltwater croc here 
Um, what I'm mainly going to be doing is spinning them so that they are um, sort of further out at the top than the bottom so that we can hide their feet. So we'll do something like that with this lion here. I want him to be pretty much near the base of it. And then once I find out where I want to sink him in, if we drag the top of him forward a bit, then we can hide the feet and just have the parts that we want um, sticking out of the rocks. And obviously we'll recolor him so he blends in perfectly with the rocks around him. And we're just gonna keep doing that. With loads of different animals, this took so long, <laughs> um, until we get something that I'm happy with. I spent absolutely ages playing through all the career mode maps because I really wanted the yellow anaconda statue, which I'd assumed would be like a really big long snake that would look great across the top. And then when I finally cut it, it's tiny and curled up like a little spring. So I positioned it under the lion's tail, which sticks out and you can't get rid of to make it look like the lion's tail was the head of the snake and then the curled up part was just the rest of its body. I was pretty pleased with how it turned out in the end. Um, we got the gorilla as well. Definitely want to use this guy. This is a really cool statue and he fits in really nicely when you get the rotation right. Um, and we'll recolor him as well so he sits in nicely. And then it's over to the other side. We'll get a kangaroo in here, loads of other animals and start getting this side to look good. We'll put some otters and seals and another crocodile going across the top. Some of this will be hidden by what I'm going to build in front of it, but I want it to be consistent all the way along. And then we'll get back to the fountain. I've chopped the top of it off and made the colour a bit more suitable for this zoo. Uh, we'll put some palms in here. They're going to be another big feature. Obviously palms big in California. And then this is actually the little water feature from the crane habitat, which just happened to fit perfectly on the back of the fountain. So I'm going to use this once I get it in the right spot, there we go. And then maybe make an adjustment to that tree at the back. That's way too big. We'll need to um, get something smaller in there. So get one of these palms in instead. Yeah, that looks better. We'll sink a few ponytail palms in as always. And then we're going to get some animals in here. Not real animals, obviously. We'll be using some more of the reward statues. I've got something that I think is going to look really cute in this fountain and give it a bit of a focal point for people to look at. So I think a pair of capybara are going to look really nice in here. So we'll get this one positioned where I want it. Now there's only one statue in the game, so I'll have to use the same one twice and we'll just adjust the other one. So I'm going to have this guy look like he is uh, submerged in the water with the one on the left standing. And then I'll just keep making tiny little adjustments to both of them, moving them around until they're in exactly the place that I want them to be and I like the way it looks. And I think this is a cute little addition to the front. Then we're going to fill in the gap in the middle. So this is going to be a solid rock wall behind the fountain. And again, we're going to spam this with animal statues, loads and loads of animal statues. So we get a really nice um, sort of mural effect all the way across the front of this car park area. And then we're going to put the zoo's name on the front of this fountain. So I'm going to be using a custom font for this by the amazing Christina Triple Z. This is one of her latest fonts. I do this a lot, but I don't normally show it in the videos because I figure it's not the most exciting footage. But this um, series is all about showing sort of how you can actually make a zoo like this rather than just speeding through it. So I thought I would show you a few bits of how to get these custom fonts working nicely. So we're just going to pick the first letter that we need, move it, put a grid piece behind it. This is one of the uh, curved top walls, doesn't matter which piece you use. This just lets you line them up nicely and make sure everything's perfect and then we'll drop the next letter in make sure it's sticking out the exact same amount as the first letter and looking how we want it line it up exactly and we will just repeat this for every letter until we have the zoo's full name couple more letters to go and it's done now if you're going to be putting this on a flat wall at this point you can just group it and move it to where you want this is going on a curved wall so whatever you do do not <laughs> group it just select all of it and get it into the position that you want on whichever surface it's going to go on. So we want this right in the center of this fountain here. 
So get it roughly in place. And then we're going to go in and individually move each letter so that it is perfectly lined up, much like we did on the Tree Frog Oasis. That's about the right spot, I think. And this incredible font is made out of the bracket pieces or hinge pieces, I forget what they're called. And um, they are really hard to select. So you've got to fly inside the fountain to click the back of it and select it. So it is a bit of a pain, but when it's finished, it looks absolutely amazing. That's the sign done. Let's move on to the next stage. Back at the animal wall, I'm going to use the tail of the peacock statue and incorporate it into the rock work so it becomes a design rather than an animal. And this is going to go all the way down the edges of each part of the entrance. So we've got two sides and two entrances. So we're going to have four of these. And I'm just going to copy this down and down and keep um, spinning it round until it becomes like a giant peacock towel that is part of the wall or looks like it's part of the wall rather than being an animal, if that makes sense. I really like how this looks. I was not expecting the peacock's tail to be my favorite bit. That's what we've got so far. And I'm really liking the look of that, but that road definitely needs work. So again, this is something I wouldn't normally show, but um, if you are wondering how to make a decent looking road, what you wanna do is get the plaster trim and you wanna make sure that it's as low as it can go, but so it doesn't disappear when you zoom out because some of the pieces in Planet Zoo do that. Like this one now, gone back again don't want that happening for any aerial shots of the zoo so we'll move it up like one pixel and then uh, try and zoom out again and see if it stays in the picture or not nope <laughs> so one more time move it up another pixel and this will have it so this as low as it can possibly go while still being visible as far away as you want to move the camera this road i'm using a reference photo from the entrance to san diego zoo uh, which is one of my favorite zoos that I've been to. And um, I've got no idea what two yellow lines in the middle of the road means in the US. I'm assuming it means no overtaking, but I could be completely wrong. We don't really do this in the UK. Um, but we'll just put this all the way down. And I mentioned that you don't want it to look like it was painted yesterday. So I'll get some of the grunge decals, make them the exact same color as the tarmac. Um, once it's almost disappeared, which is what we want, there we go. We'll put that in alongside the edges of these trim pieces and just put a few of these around and that will make it stop being sort of geometrically perfect and actually look a bit like it's been there for a while. There we go, it's looking a lot more like a road. Next up, it's the gardens. So I want two desert gardens on either side of this transport hub entrance and then I want some palms lining the road as well. So I've put some trim down the side of the road and we'll make some improvements to that in a minute. But we want some soil for the trees. And a trick I learned from my good friend JP, I don't know if he invented it or if he was just the first person I saw to use it, but if you turn the classic flower bed piece upside down, you get a really nice soil texture that's a lot lighter than the mulch pieces, which is a lot more suitable for Southern California. This is where we'll be planting our palm trees. Uh, you probably noticed I'm working on a really tight area here. We are in franchise mode, so there is not a huge amount of money in the zoo at the moment. So I'm concentrating on getting the area right in front of the entrance building looking perfect. And then the rest of it we can sort out later. So onto the desert garden. I want this to be planted up with gravel with succulents in it, which is something you see a lot of, which I really like the look of. So we're gonna be using the gravel path again raising it off the ground and then making sure that the curb is under the level of the plaster of this planter, which is based on the tree frog oasis. And we'll put two pieces of path in at each end and then join them together in a nice shape. And then we'll run a load of dark gray plaster around the curbs so that it looks like a nice planter uh, rather than a bit of path that's floating in midair. And we will fill this with all kinds of deserty plants and plants that don't need a lot of water um, so it's suitable for Southern California so we'll get these palms in I don't think this is the exact species but this is the similarest palm in the game to the reference photos of San Diego Zoo that I was looking at and then we'll fill the bed with succulents and cacti just trying to come up with a nice arrangement as I've said many times on my channel I am NOT a gardener I do not know a great deal about plants so I just go with stuff that looks nice and matches the various reference images I've seen we'll get some rocks in there 
We've used very few real rocks in this zoo so far, uh, and that's one of my favourite things to do. That is going to change once we start getting into the habitats and all the big areas that we'll be building later. But I wanted to get some nice desert rocks in here. And then just a few more touch-ups, a little bit of grass poking through this earth, and a second trim for the road. And that's this whole area done. I'll show you how it looks in a minute, but before we do that, I just want to give you a sneak peek of what we're going to be doing next week. The entrance building. I cannot wait to do this. You know I love massive, ridiculous zoo entrances, and this zoo is going to be no exception. Let's take a look at where we got to today. So here's one of the San Bernardino Zoo coaches about to go into the transport hub with a desert garden next to it. This fountain I am really pleased with, especially with all the animals and the rock work in the background. I think that looks really nice. And here's an overview of the whole area that we've done today. I know it's only small, but it's important to get the details right. Like I said back in episode one, I want this to be a really detailed zoo. And this is the desert garden. Really happy with how everything's turned out today. Let's take a quick look at where we were and where we are now. Looking good. I will see you next week for the entrance build. Thank you for watching as always, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.